If you've been listening to this radio station over the last couple of years, you may well have heard a couple of interviews that I had with the singer Ridian Roberts. Another year has passed, and I think it's probably time for an update. I'm sitting in the middle of Swansea, and instead of having a telephone line between me and Ridian, I'm looking at him as I speak. Ridian, thank you very much indeed for agreeing to join me here on uh, Apple FM. Another year has gone by. So what challenges have there been in this last year for you? It's all about the, the new album, really. The, we have been recording that, preparing uh, the, the, for, for the launch, which will be uh, the start of March. But it, we have to get everything in place now because over the Christmas period, the music industry shuts down, more or less. So, um, yeah, it's very exciting. It's a classical crossover album, so there is a, a more of a classical content on this. Um, than there was on my uh, my last released album, uh, which was more of a sort of, as you know, pop synth album. I mean, I did release a Welsh album briefly, uh, but this 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 album serious. You know, I mean, we're putting a, a, a lot of time and energy and money into this, and uh, we we the, the the whole goal is to get a number one in the classical charts. And one of my long term dreams has been to get a, a classical Brit award. So um, I think we we have a chance doing that. Um, and I'm very excited about the release. When does the release come out? Well, it's probably the 3rd of March. I mean, the 3rd will be the, the Monday. Uh, ideally, it would have been good to release perhaps on St. David's Day. Uh, that might still be a possibility. I don't know whether people release on Saturdays, but I think management say that it is possible. But if not, it'll be the 3rd. I mean, it, it, it'll be released when it's ready. I mean, that's the main thing. It's nice to be independent now and not have to be under sort of major record label uh, deadlines and things, you know. So uh, it's been great. I mean, working with um, an independent record label that my management set up, Futura Classics, and uh, I've got new management this year since I last spoke to you, and they've been brilliant. Uh, in the past year, I've played the Rocky in the Rocky Horror Show, which was great fun, uh, albeit a little bit tiring physically because I had to stay in shape. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether I spoke to you before my Welsh tour, did I? Uh, could could have done. Uh, I think it was before the Welsh tour, yes. Mm. So I, I did a, a tour of, of Wales, um, uh, which was which was great. I, I think the audience uh, enjoyed it and it, got, it gave me a chance to tour all around the all, all, all the theatres that I, I haven't necessarily been around in Wales, which I think I ought. Uh, first Welsh tour, really, since uh, The X Factor. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You do seem to have the ability to fill any theatre that you go to, which is rather nice. So, I mean, how do you manage that? Oh, it's clever booking, see, you know. And uh, <laughs> Well, no, it, that, it, it, that is important for me. You know, I, I've said that I don't want to play to a theatre that, that, that holds 1,800 and then you get 200 people coming. I mean, that's, that's pretty soul-destroying, I think. And... Uh, uh, there's a lot of pressure on me to perform nationwide all of the time, you know. And the trouble is, you can't always do that. And there has to be a demand. It's about timing with uh, tours. And usually, one tours after you, a release of an album that's successful, uh, like I did on my first album. We had a successful British tour. But for me, yeah, it's, it's important to see most of the theatre, if not all of the theatre, fill, because... Um, yeah, there's nothing worse than performing to an empty seat. Are you tempted to tour abroad? Have the opportunities arisen for that yet? Oh, yes, totally. I, I really am, yeah. Uh, the European proms would be interested. 
uh, that's a huge event um, and uh, next year we'll be doing that uh, also my new management the whole uh, uh, reason I went with Neil O'Brien is because he has an international outlook he, he, he likes to uh, promote artists internationally he does he, he, he's got a huge roster of great stars that, that are international and uh, he, he said to me he said really you, you, you will be you, sh- you should be on the international stage and it's great to hear that because I've never been released or promoted internationally other than a couple of one off musical theatre arena performances with War of the Worlds and things so and I think perhaps my first album was released in w- one part of Asia but it wasn't really backed financially so it wasn't that successful but so so kind of it's a clean start a clean slate internationally and and neil thinks that's a, a great opportunity so yeah we we'll, we'll, it we'll, we'll see what what happens you know uh, i always say though it's important to keep the home fires burning musically you know and wales obviously as i speak to you now we're here in swansea i've got a, a concert tomorrow night in uh, the swansea grand a lovely theater it's important to me you know and it always will be Yes, you've actually preempted my next question because what I was going to say is that if you go on to continental tours and foreign tours, how are you going to address the support that you have at home? Because there's going to be limitations of time. Well, absolutely right. And I often get asked, would I like to break America? And you know, one part of me thinks, well, yeah, it would be great. But once you go over there, there is no time to do anything else. You have to promote in every single state and then tour in every state. And at least, as I said, no time. Artists like Natasha Bedfield and people like this, who were big stars in the UK, and then went out to the States because they had a hit in the States. We haven't heard of them really in the UK since, but it doesn't mean to say they're not working. You know, the the the, the, the typical question is, oh, well, what are you doing now? I think most people think that we're sat at home watching telly, thinking, oh, well, what shall I do? But the reality is, there's always something going on. And for me, it's recording the album, it's been theatre and then one-off tours with a view of obviously seeing my career grow, strengthen over time. And internationally, yeah, that would be great. But it's all about scheduling, to answer your question. I mean, I wouldn't just tour the Europe and the world and not do Britain because my core audience is British. But I think my fans would like to see me expand and you know they, they they won't they won't thank me for the plane ticket it'll cost to come and watch me but i think they you know they 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 would they would welcome it if we toured the rest of the world
Well, I remember one of your aspirations last time we talked, which you said you'd like to open in a new musical in New York. That's absolutely true. Yeah, that is, is, is that still an aspiration? Of course. Yeah, my you know my aspirations haven't really changed since uh, since I was a kid. You know, when we're sitting, well, fourteen when I knew what I wanted to do, and I still like the same music, and I, I still think that I have the same destiny. And um, one of my things to do is, or one of the things I'd like to achieve is to create a role in theatre. Absolutely, on in the in the UK and on Broadway. That's something I'd like to do before I die, most certainly, yeah. You always appear to be very grounded, uh, and your Welsh roots and your Welsh tours, are these the sort of things that pull you back to the world that you know while you're experimenting in other fields? Uh, certainly, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm very proud to be Welsh, and uh, there's a, a demand for me in Wales. That's just the, the honest answer. I mean, people want to book me in Wales. And you said at the start of the interview... I don't often perform to theatres that aren't sold out, and that's very kind, but it's because the venue, such as Swansea Grand or the promoter in Wales, um, wants to book me and there's a demand for me, which is lovely. Um, but, yeah, staying grounded is, is is so important. I've said before, it's, there's two sides to me. There's the personal life and then the performing life. One of my mottos is stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Stop looking at what other people are doing. Hmm. It's a bit like the running machine. I do a lot of running. It's always people running next to you, and you very often you you think, oh, what, what are they doing? You know, whilst you're running, this doesn't really matter because you're not going anywhere anyway. You're still in the same place. So focus on your own goals, and uh, that's what I've been doing. I think it is important though to see what your contemporaries are, are, are doing as far as where are they playing, what kind of albums are they making, and then so, so for me, classical crossover. You look at my contemporaries there, people like Alfie Bow. Russell Watson, Catherine Jenkins, Hayley Westnerer, and uh, that's really my world. So it would be naive to not sort of learn from them, see what they've done. They've been, they've been doing that far, a, a lot longer than my, myself. But then it's what kind of spice do I bring? What additional things do I bring to the party? And uh, I think it's pretty obvious that I am different from my contemporaries, and yet we're still in the same world. So my goal to get classical number one and a classical Brit would be their goal as well. So, you know, it's connected. Thinking of the classical Brits, how are these things voted for? Good question. I don't really know. I, I, I think um, I think it helps if you're with Universal <laughs> because I think they organise the classical Brits. Uh, God love them. But uh, I, some, of the, um, some of the ways of getting nominated anyway uh, is uh, I think the album, of the album of the year is voted for by the public, which is great. Uh, so I think they can vote online. You need to have had a top-charting album. You need to have been one of the biggest sellers in the year in order to be in the pool of ten, I think, that are, that, that are considered, and then the public vote. But there's a board. There's a board of judges that say, OK, there's the breakthrough artist or, uh, you know, uh, I think album, album of the year is the only award that gets voted for by the public. So maybe I have a chance in that one. And that would be lovely. I mean, that's a goal. I, I came close in my second album. Mm -hmm. We were nominated and I think we, well, we, were, we came second place. Um, people might say, well, how do you do second? Because we were only first that were announced. But I, in, uh, during the party at the Classical Brits, I actually asked the organiser, I said, was I, was I far away? Was I... And uh, she said, no, no, actually, we're very close. You came second. And I was like, darn it, again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this number two. Um, but we were close. You know, but I like it because it, it's somewhere to go, isn't it? It's, uh, I keep aspiring to get that number one. Yeah, that would be nice. That's one of my other... I mean, I'm going on about it a lot because it's uh, along with the Broadway musical. Creating that role, getting a number one album is important for me. And some people might say, well, the classical world, it doesn't mean so much, you know, but that's, that's rubbish. To me, it means an awful lot. Mm. So if you follow me, then it's important, because no matter what about the sales and stuff, I'm not thinking as a business, I'm thinking about an achievement and saying, we got a classical number one, we got a classical Brit Award, and no one could take that away from us. I think you, you were talking about being an individual, following your own furrow and all the rest of it. Um, and you certainly have that range of qualities which mark you out as somebody who is definitely different. And with that, uh, provided you've also got the confidence in everything that you do, then you can move forward in the direction that you want to move forward in. So, OK, we've talked about goals that you had last year. We've talked about your goals this year with the disc. Any fresh ones on the horizon? 
No, I think it's kind of all encompassing the al- you know the album you, it, we need to get that right. Once that's right, then there'll be other goals, I'm sure. But if I don't focus on making this record as close to perfect as I can, off the back of that, then we'll get a, a UK tour, and then, like I said, management will push it internationally, which they will do. But the way international works is having a success in the UK first, sadly, <laughs> but it, it kind of helps. I, I'm trying to think, what are my other goals? I mean, there's lots of goals I want to achieve in my life, but you say, in, in the, on the horizon, what, do I, what, what are the goals? And it's a number one album, it's another tour, and then the Brit Award would be great. As far as musicals, I've turned down two musicals this year solely to focus on the album quite funny because one of the shows was uh, sort of featured on a Channel 4 documentary the other day and I was kind of kind of glad I didn't go into that one <laughs> you have to be available with albums and it, because there's prom- promotion to do people don't see how the interviews are give to magazines and they'll hear on radio obviously but then before that there's meetings you know it, the, the meetings to make the album for a start Think about it. You know, you, right, what, what songs are we going to record? Okay, who's going to record them? Okay, we'll have a meeting with that person. Okay, well, well, what about the mixer? Who's going to mix it? Okay, we'll have a meeting. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of... And then the PR person and then the, the TV plugger. And i got a new team around me this year, so I've had to meet with all those people uh, out of a, a, a short list of others that you consider as well. So all these things take time. It's not like with, with a major record label, you're just given all these people. I, I've hand-picked everyone this time. So it's kind of on my head, this album, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been great because it's, uh, the fans have been extremely involved this time around. Uh, I've, I've made the album through a website called Pledge Music uh, that uh, my, my, my new management suggested. And initially I was a little reluctant. I was like, well, what was Pledge Music, it sounds a little bit like a charity, and actually the money is given percentage to charity, which is great. You wouldn't see that at a major record label, but it, it's essentially that uh, the it's it's interactive with the fans. They get involved before the release of the album, and in so doing, they help fund the uh, recording of the album. You know, and some people say, "Well, well why don't you just fund it yourself?" And uh, but but I am. I'm giving the large share to uh, promotion, which is so expensive. You know, the the, the TV uh, advertising, for instance. So that's coming. I'm doing that. But it's, I think what Pledge is not just a financial backing, it's, it's, it, it's getting the fans involved and they get things out of it. It's not like they're just donating money. They'll, they'll have a one-off experience with me. Or they might have a backstage uh, meet and greet and a concert ticket. Uh, they could have a, you know, the signed album before any of the shops get it. Things like that. And, um, and, in, and I, I, I do video blogs and stuff. I hope they enjoy it. So, yeah, like I said, I was reluctant initially but we've nearly achieved our target. In fact, we've surpassed 100% of the pledge, which is brilliant. I'm, I'm being greedy and asking for 200%, uh, which is, would be fantastic. That's actually what we need. You know, other artists have done it that are huge. A guy from Guns N' Roses is on pledge. Slash. If it's good enough for Slash, then it's probably good enough for me. And uh, I think more and more people, the music industry has certainly changed, and more and more people will look to this kind of forum to have control of their album and not be told what to do by... Uh, some accountant and a music record label. You know. Yes, it does seem a luxury indeed to be able to pick your own team in order to focus on what you're doing with that particular album. Yeah, I mean, sorry to, yeah, it, it, it is a luxury. And, and, you know, if I was offered a major record deal initially, would I have gone with it? Probably yes. But let's not forget that huge names like Adele, they're independent. They come from an independent record label. So if it works, it really works. No ties, and it's... Um, that's exciting for me. Uh, I'm just praying it, that it works. Well, when the record comes out, or, and uh, when we have news of it, uh, I'm going to catch up with you sometime later in the year to find out how it's all gone. Really, and I'm very grateful for the fact you can spend some time with us on the radio airwaves. So thank you very much indeed, Rudian, for talking once again to Apple FM. It's been my pleasure. I look forward to the next time. Oh, man.
conquer my country's heart, they rise to fail. She is eternal long before the nation's lines were drawn. When no flags flew, when no Despair.